Okay, we got a great study today. Um, and the author, um, knowing that he can't cover everything, <laughs> just gives us a, a, a bird's eye view, if you can follow that language. I was looking last night at uh, Paul's missionary journeys, and when you look at a map, boy, you can see all the places that he went uh, preaching the gospel. It's amazing. But for our study, uh, the author just wants us to focus on uh, some things that are very important, and we'll, we'll talk through those. Let's begin with the introduction uh, on the sheet that you have and on the PowerPoint. Uh, Lawson, uh, the Lawson Today introduction, third largest city in Roman Empire, talking about this, the church at Antioch. <clears throat> Control commerce, uh, Mesopotamia, plain, full of mythology, potent in commerce, powerful in politics, prominent in history, uh, became the center of missionary activity of the New Testament era. And I think we'll, we'll see that today as we look at this, at this church. First of all, we have to go back and establish the fact that there was a lot of persecution uh, taking place uh, in Jerusalem. And that's where we're going to focus, because as we look at the people in Jerusalem, we know that Stephen, of course, was stoned to death. And we know Saul uh, was involved. He was there when Stephen was stoned to death. And we look at him in Acts chapter 9 on his way to Damascus. If he found anybody that believed in Jesus, he was going to bound them and bring them back to Jerusalem. Had gotten letters from the high priests. So the author doesn't go into all of these details, but I think we'll, we'll talk about some of them. Uh, <clears throat> so in this history we have, uh, it says, uh, history of the establishment of the church at Antioch. Dispersion of Jerusalem church. Uh, preached Jesus in Antioch. Well, let's just start with... Uh, uh, verse 1, just to give the background on this. So in Acts 8 and verse 1, Now Saul was consenting to his death. At the time, a great persecution arose against the church which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial, and made great lamentation over him. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering every house and dragging off men and women, committing them to prison. And, and then, of course, we have Christ's preached in Samaria. Therefore, those who were scattered abroad, those who were scattered, rather, went everywhere preaching the word. And then, uh, that's up to verse 4, uh, we add verse 5, Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them. So what do we have? We have great persecution taking place in Jerusalem. And the Christians there, they didn't give up. <laughs> now keep in mind, the apostles, where were they? They were left in Jerusalem. But those Christians that we've already talked about, the 3,000, we talked about 3,000, you know, obeyed the gospel in Acts 2.41, about 3,000. We talked about 5,000 in Acts 4 and 4. And then we had talked about some more that obeyed the gospel in Acts 5. I think uh, Acts 5.14. And how they began to multiply the number so what is this telling us? Telling us that those who obeyed the, had, had obeyed the gospel, they went everywhere in spite of this persecution. They went everywhere preaching and teaching Jesus Christ. And I think that's important 
Now, we will never encounter the type of persecution that they encountered. Certainly, Stephen being stoned to death. Uh, so, what is that telling us? If these Christians could be scattered abroad and they kept their focus on cross and continued to preach cross, then that's telling us something about our role of what we ought to be doing with less persecution. Now, you talk about um, Gary Jones in India. They are having a lot of persecution over there. But he's still trying to teach the gospel. I don't know how much Doran Flynn is having in Africa, but I know there's a lot going on in, uh, in India. So then we move to number two on your outline, preach Jesus in Antioch. So we look in Acts chapter 11 and uh, get a view there of what was going on. Uh, Acts chapter 11, and we want to start there with verse 20 and read some of that. <clears throat> But some of them were men from Cyprus and Cyrene, who when they had come to Antioch, spoke to the Hellenists, preaching the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number, of, a great number believed and turned to the Lord. Now, we didn't talk about this, but you know, the uh, Hellenists... Hellenists <laughs> I had, the widows were being neglected, if you'll go back to that, remember? Uh, and the apostles decided they were not going to leave the Word of God and start serving tables. So they appointed seven men to take care of this business. That's why I say the author here has just given us a bird's eye view of what we're getting into. Uh, also, when Mary and I went on our Holy Land cruise, uh, one of the excursions that we took, we went to Cyprus. Of course, we went to a lot of other places. We went to Athens, Greece, saw the Acropolis, went to biblical Ephesus, um, saw where the Apostle Paul, there was a lake of the Apostle Paul, went in and, and uh, we saw that. Uh, so, so, so a lot, but just since Cyprus is mentioned here, I just wanted to, uh, to mention that. Now, verse 21, And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned to the Lord. Isn't it something that in spite of the persecution, the Lord was still with them? Now, what is that telling us? In spite of things that will happen in our lives, if we're trying to do things for the Lord, He'll be with us. And so we need to take a, a page out of this book and realize that God will be with us as long as we're striving uh, to do His will. Verse 22. Then news of those things came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent out Barnabas to go as far as Antioch. When he came, he had, he had seen the grace of God. He was glad and encouraged them all that, were, that with purpose, heart, purpose of heart, they should continue with the Lord. For he was a good man, verse 24, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith. And a great many people were added to the Lord. You can see people are just being added to the Lord. Then Barnabas departed to Tarsus to seek Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. So it was that for a whole year they assembled the church and taught a great many people. And the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. Now you have to remember, we've just talked about Saul and his persecution upon the church. But when we read in Acts chapter 9, what happens? Paul is Saul at the time. He's on his way to Damascus. He's gotten letters from the high priest. And what happened? Anybody remembers what happened in Acts 9? 
He met Jesus. He met Jesus on the road. And uh, just to continue the thought, uh, in verse 15, we'll just start there. But the Lord said to him, go, it's talking to Ananias, go for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name among the Gentiles, kings and the children of Israel. Ananias was afraid of him. In fact, when you back up to verse 13, Ananias answered, Lord, the Lord told him to go. He said, I have heard how many, I've heard many about this man, how much harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. So Saul's name was out there as a persecutor. Everybody was afraid of him. But what happens? We look down in verse 18 of Acts chapter 9, and immediately there, immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales, and he received his sight at once, and he arose and was baptized. So now we have a baptized believer who once was a persecutor, and now he is on the Lord's side. And so we look and we see how the church, how he and Barnabas uh, were able to teach people, going back to Acts chapter 11, for a whole year. Just imagine being able to uh, teach in a location for a whole year, uh, teaching the Word of God and the impact that will have uh, upon those who would hear the gospel. Going back to verse 26 in Acts chapter 11, and when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. So it was that for a whole year, they assembled the church and taught a great many people, and the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. So this is the first time we hear this word, you know, Christian. We'll, let's see if there's anything else we want to cover before we get into this. Um, but I think you see that Barnabas and Paul now are, are, are walking together. And uh, the church grows as a result of his exaltation. That's Acts eleven twenty three through 24. Barnabas secure, secures Paul to aid at Antioch, Acts eleven twenty five through 26. Uh, I think you see here two people walking together in spreading the gospel, telling people about Jesus. Just imagine <laughs> taking a whole year to talk about Christ, to teach Christ to people who don't know him. What if we would do something like that in Rome, Georgia? Just focus on cross. And I know we're doing some teaching right now, but I'm saying these were folks, they were going out teaching people who didn't know cross. And they were turning to the Lord. And so then we get down to the character of the church. The name Christian, first given there in Acts 11, in verse 26. Now what do we have as we think about uh, as we think about a Christian? Um, the Bible gives us here, let's see, Christians first given the name first given in Acts 11, 26, not given to the church. So this was this was not a Christian church. <laughs> the author makes sure we understand that. This name was given to individuals. So those who obeyed the gospel, they became Christians. It was not given to the church. Well, some people today, well, we have the Christian church. Well, the Bible doesn't say that. Now, when you think about this name Christian, what do we get out of it? You know, you go back. The author didn't go into this, but the name Christian, we go back to, let's pick it up in Acts 26 and verse 28. We have Paul 
talking to, uh, I'll come back to that. Come, we have Paul talking to King Agrippa. And let's go there for just a moment. Now this is what King Agrippa said to Paul. You almost persuade me to become a Christian. What about that? Almost. <laughs> you know, you can almost get well and still die. You can almost catch Delta and still miss the plane. Almost is not good enough because we cannot read anywhere in Scripture where King Agrippa obeyed the gospel. We can't read that in Scripture. And then listen to Paul's reply. And Paul said, I would to God, in verse 29, that not only you, but also all who, are, all who hear me today might become both almost and altogether such as I am, except these chains. So Paul was in chains. Isn't that, a man? Isn't that something? He was in chains. But he was still doing what? He was still teaching the gospel. Still telling people about Jesus. Now the Bible only mentions the word Christians three times. In the Bible. We got it here, and we, that's one that we just talked about. <laughs> we got another one in Acts uh, eleven twenty six. If we go back, we just read that one. So you don't have a problem with that one. But another one is in 1 Peter. We need to go there and look at that one. In 1 Peter chapter 4. And your outline might say... Six, but it's actually 16. Okay. And I'm going to start in verse 15. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or as a busybody in other people's matters. Yet, if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. So those are the three times we have this term Christian mentioned in the Bible. First called Christians at Antioch. King Agrippa, you almost said to Paul, you almost persuades me to be, become a Christian. And then we have it here in 1 Peter 4 and verse 16. So if we suffer as a Christian, what is that saying to us? If we are persecuted for being a Christian, don't be ashamed. I mean, we can be persecuted for a lot of things we might do. But if somebody wants to persecute you for being a Christian... You take a stand for a Christian, uh, to, for being a Christian. Uh, and I think that's what uh, 1 Peter 4 and verse 16 is saying. Because of all this persecution, don't be ashamed, but glorify God in this matter. Now let me pause and see what thoughts you might have. Anybody got any thoughts? Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, and and what he's saying is somebody that uh, ends up in sin, and you walk with them, you try to get them back, and they won't come back. And um, of course, we've talked about that in the class of withdrawing fellowship. We went through all of that. Um, you, we got scripture on that, so. And what's the purpose of that? It's to save the soul of the person and then to save the church. Uh, you know, if you just let a person do what they want to do, <laughs> it'll corrupt the church. But hopefully, uh, if the whole church can take a stand and withdraw uh, fellowship, that will cause that person to think of his way and hopefully will get him back to the Lord. Okay, any other thoughts? Let's see. Uh, Number two under Roman numeral two, energetic and zealous in evangelistic work. Two men preached one whole year, and we've already emphasized that. Uh, we got Acts 15 and verse 35. Let's look at that and see what that is saying to us. Acts 15 and verse 35. Paul and Barnabas also remained in Antioch, teaching and preaching the word of the Lord with many others. Uh, I think as we, we look at this, uh, and then we go down to verse 36, then after some days, Paul said to Barnabas, let us now go back and visit our brethren in every city, where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they are doing. Uh, I think the focus here, what the author is trying to get us to see, is that, that they were preaching the word, well supplied with teachers, uh, the development possible to the church to teach in uh, persecution, and then, of course, before we get into the missionary, we look back at 13 verses 1 and 3, and just before we go to the missionary efforts. Um, let's look at that, Acts 13, 1 and through 3. It says, Now in the church that was in, at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, Simeon, and who was called Niger, Lucius, Serene, Manin, who had been brought up with Herod, the Tetra, and Saul. And they ministered to the Lord and fasted. The Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul to the work which I have called them. And then having fasted and prayed, laid hands on them, they were sent away. Uh, so they were sent away to preach the gospel, which is telling us it was not just a localized effort. And I think that's what we're going to see as we move down to the next uh, section, uh, missionary effort. Now, what about us today? Uh, do we have a missionary effort? First tour, return to Antioch. You know, we got, we've got, we support, let me say it this way. We support missionaries. We support Gary Jones. Um, we support uh, Doran Flynn in Africa. And we got others, uh, the Payton in the Dominican Republic. I didn't write these down, but we got several people that we support. You might say, well, I will never get a chance to go to Africa. And my wife and I are now talking about 
we told uh, Doran that um, in July, we're going to try to come to Zimbabwe. And he's working on a plan so we can see some things while we're there and see some of the work that he's doing while we're there. But uh, you might say, well, I'll never get a chance to go to India. Well, you can support that work through the church. As we take up contributions, donations for the work there, you can support that by giving your donation. And certainly when they, these ministers come, they always give us a thorough report of what's going on in these places. Now, we got, others, uh, we got other missionaries that I could name, but I didn't write them all down. But I think Oak Hill does its share of supporting missionaries. Can we do more? I'm sure we can. Uh, Johnny, Johnny, what would you say? Uh, that was just two or three. How many more we got out there? We got the Payton, we got uh, Doran Flynn, we got uh, Gary Jones. Those are the main ones. Um, so what? Yeah. So you see, we got, we got local support, we got international support. Yeah, we got face in Africa as well. So, but you can see the effort here that was put forth by Paul and Barnabas trying to get the gospel. And as I said last night, I was looking at a map that showed all the different cities that they went to teaching the gospel. So we have the first tour, we're down to the first tour, and they return to Antioch. Uh, then we have the second tour and return to Antioch. And five under there is this benevolent church must have been liberal in giving, sent relief to Jerusalem according to their ability. First church to send relief to those of another locality. And that's Acts 11, uh, 29 through 30. Now how would we, what would we think about Oak Hill? Do we consider ourselves to be uh, a church that sends relief? I would, I would think so. Uh, we send relief trying to get the gospel spread in different localities. We've had people who need help, and we've responded to that. The hurricane relief, we just told you, I don't know if you got the latest on that. I think it ended up being, Brother Lonnie, 7000 over $7,000 that response to the hurricane relief. Um, so we are in the business of trying to reach out to people. Uh, I talked about the folks who come to the church building for, for food. It's very difficult for people to walk around today and be hungry. And certainly when they come to our aid, we need to reach out and do something to assist. And you play a part in this because we go to, uh, we got a committee, and they go to, uh, that committee goes to Sam's and buys the products that we use, the food that we use in the pantry, and we give that out to people who are in need. But also we need to be thinking of missionaries, trying to do more for them. I know in, in Africa where Doran is, every time they dig a well, and Johnny, I can't remember how much a well costs now. But every time they dig a well, they plant a church. Do you recall how much a well is? Maybe five, seven thousand dollars $7,000. But every time, think of that. Every time they dig a well, because what? Water is precious. We don't consider water to be precious. <laughs> I mean, we turn it on and just let it run. But over there, water is precious. So every time they dig a well in Africa, they plant a church. And that's important because the people come because of, of the water. So we need to do more, maybe assist more, give more when it comes to uh, 
of this missionary effort. Uh, and then I want to get down to the fact that, uh, okay, we're talking about the benevolent church. Recognize the local church as the medium through which the work to sin. Of course, we had elders involved in that. Recognize the organization of the New Testament church and respect the eldership. And then recognizing the authority of the apostles and the final determination of the truth of controversial questions. You know, the Jerusalem conference, <laughs> what was that all about? Let's just get there because I'm, I'm looking at the time. We're not going to have time to get through all of this. But what was that Jerusalem conference all about? Can anybody just... Tell me. Exactly. Joe Heron just said it. The Jewish Christians who were circumcised, they thought once a Gentile became a Christian, that that person had to be circumcised. They were going to force these new Christians to obey the gospel and be circumcised. They had already obeyed the gospel to be circumcised. So that's what that conference was about. So when we go to Acts chapter 15, they had a big discussion. And they realized and found out from the apostles and the elders, no, if they have obeyed the gospel, that's enough. Christ is enough. We could, we could go there and read that. But Christ is enough. They don't need to be circumcised. Once you obey Christ, that's enough. Uh, but that's what they were trying to do, and that's what that authority is. The, the apostles, now they, they did give them three things they had to do. Uh, let me just go there for a moment and look at that. Uh, <clears throat> so Acts 15, And certain men came down from Judea and taught the brethren, unless you are circumcised according to the custom of, of Moses, you cannot be saved. Talking to these G Gentile Christians now, therefore when Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and dispute with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain others of them should go up to Jerusalem. So they came up to Jerusalem and the matter was taken up by the apostles and the elders. So in verse 7, we'll just start there. When, when there had been much dispute, Peter rose up and said to them, Men and brethren, you know that a good while ago God made choice among us by my mouth that the Gentiles should hear the word of the gospel and believe. So God, who knows the heart, acknowledged them by giving them the Holy Spirit just as he did us and made no distinction between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Uh, let's see. They were given, told to do three things, and they had to take that back to the church at uh, Antioch. Uh, let's see if I can get. For Moses, verse 21, For Moses has through many generations, those who preach him in every city bring uh, being read in the synagogue every Sabbath. And they wrote a letter, verse 23. They wrote a letter by them, the apostles, the elders, and the brethren to the brethren who are in the Gentiles in Antioch, Syria. Since we have heard that some who went out from us have troubled you with words and unsettling your souls, saying you must be circumcised and keep the law, to whom we gave no such commandment. It seemed good to us, being assembled with one accord, to send chosen men to you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men who have risked their lives for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have therefore sent Judas and Silas, who will also report the same thing <clears throat> by word of mouth. 
For it is seem good to the Holy Spirit to us to lay upon you no great burden, no greater burden than these necessary things. And now these are the things they were told to do. That you abstain from things offered to idols. That's number one. <laughs> from blood, from things strangled, and from sexual immorality. If you keep yourselves from these, you will do well. So this thing of trying to make these Gentile Christians be circumcised, I mean, these Jews had gone out of their mind trying to bind up on these new Christians more than what the gospel teaches. I mean, once you obey Christ, that's all you need. I was talking to my son, Wendell, the other day, and he was, um, he's teaching a class down at the Renaissance Church of Christ in uh, Atlanta, and he mentioned this scripture to me, and of course, you know, <laughs> I went there and looked at it, but I want to mention it to you. It's found in Colossians chapter 2, uh, just just turn there with me. This is a Bible class, so we, we got time <laughs> to find it. Colossians chapter 2 and verse number, let's see, 10. Look at that with me. And you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. You are complete. <laughs> if you got Christ, you don't need anything else. That's what he's saying. And that's what these apostles and elders had to convey to these Jews, trying to make these Gentiles I mean, just think about it. If they had had their way, what would that mean for us? <laughs> we would have to be circumcised. <laughs> but they couldn't, they, they wanted them to know, all you need to do is obey cross. And when you obey cross, you're complete. That's all you need to do. I wanted to put that scripture in there. So what do we get out of a lesson like this? We, first of all, we know that Paul and Barnabas, we see as we close this lesson, a growing church, Antioch, a growing church. Much people added to the Lord. They were interested in the study of God's word. This, this accounted for their strength and growth. Uh, a year of renewal. Just think about two people preaching and teaching the gospel for a whole year and the impact that had upon the church. And then they just didn't stay there. They went on these missionary journeys and shared the gospel with others and came back and reported to the church at Antioch. So just a great study when you look at it. But we had those Jews trying to bind up on the Gentiles something that God had not bound and was not pleasing to God. And these apostles and the elders came together and said, no, these Gentiles, Christians, they don't have to do that. They don't have to be circumcised. If they have obeyed the gospel, they're in cross. And Colossians 2.10 says what? They're complete. <laughs> I like that. They're complete. Yeah, nothing else is needed. What? In this, of what? Colossians, okay, let me go to Colossians. Colossians 2, verse what? 11? Okay. Uh, 2, verse 11. 10, 11. It says, in him... You were also circumcised with the circumcision made without hand by putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of cross. So really, when you get in cross, that's all you need. 
So let's keep that in mind as we close today. And um, the church, though, at Antioch is so important because that's where we first get this term Christian. And we are Christians. And um, we have to continue to live our lives as Christians. It means something to be a Christian. Uh, I was thinking about, I got two or three minutes, I was thinking of Philemon, or Onesimus, you know, when you go to that story, he was a runaway slave. And Paul apparently had taught Philemon. But then he taught Onesimus. And he says, now, I'm sending him back to you. But I'm not sending him back as a slave. I'm sending him back as a brother. And he says, if, you owe, if he owes you anything, you put that on my account. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that something? Because I'm sending him back now. You go and read that. It's just one chapter. So you can read it in five minutes. I'm sending him back now as a brother. And that makes a difference, doesn't it? And so that's the lesson today. Uh, we'll look at another church for next week. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for your comments. And as I said, this, this author has just given us, us a bird's eye view. When you take the map, these missionary journeys, and put it up on the screen, you'll see all the places that Paul went to, teaching and preaching the gospel. But let's do